Do you like being in control? It could be hard sometimes to let go because we want to take our life in a certain direction and we don't want to leave our fate up to others to decide. But the reality is that much of our lives is shaped by things that are beyond our control. And so what happens when you find yourself in a situation where you have no control left? when you are no longer calling the shots. We could make matters worse by trying to take things into our own hands, trying to force our wills upon the world around us. And if we're not careful, we can even fall into the trap of a God complex. I hate not being in control. And with the world we find ourselves in, with the rapid changes in technology and AI and the ever-increasing polarization of society, I've recognized that it's too big to put on myself. And so these tensions are explored in the blockbuster mega hit Avengers Age of Ultron. And we'll see through this film, along with the biblical narrative and the narrative therapy emphasis on identity, how to resist the God complex and live authentically within both the limitations and possibilities of what it means to be human. Welcome to the Live a Meaningful Story podcast, where we learn how to navigate life one film at a time. We are four friends with backgrounds in storytelling, filmmaking, teaching, and narrative therapy. Join us on our quest towards telling and living our stories more meaningfully. I'm Derek Hatch. My name is Nick Natal. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm Joseph Wilson. I'm Jason Lin. You want to protect the world, but you don't want it to change. (laughs) How is humanity saved if it's not allowed to evolve? First thing I got to say is this is an incredibly quotable movie. Very definitely. So quotable. Well, okay, which one do you think is qu- uh, more quotable? The Dark Knight Rises or this movie? Ooh. Ooh. That's tough. <laughs> I think this I movie. I say Ultron, because, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ultron. I think this movie, just because I've watched it so many times, but I'm glad to exist. It's close. Ultron yeah. and Bane yeah. got some but great no, one-liners. So, yes, that's right. We have done Nick's pick. We've done my pick. And now for the next two episodes, we are going to be spotlighting our own one and only mm-hmm. Joseph Wilson, yep. a.k.a. Jolie Stark, a.k.a. the King of All Saints, you already know. a.k.a. Yeah. Mutant and Proud, a.k.a. Yeah. Jerome Hanson. We already know. Am I forgetting any? The King of All Seance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I clearly watch it. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, I was just telling the guys, I've watched this movie in theaters probably like six times. Infinity War is the best made Avengers movie. Yeah, this I agree. is my favorite Avengers movie. That's understandable. Yeah, this one's I think dope. This is definitely, I think, the best character work mm-hmm. out of any of the four of them. Yeah. Which is amazing because I realized that this film, Age of Ultron, isn't really about characters growing to another place. It's about revealing what's character. on the inside. Yes. Mm-hmm. Their fears, all of their fears. Yes. I, I would say if this movie didn't happen, we wouldn't have felt really deep for these characters. I, this yeah, is, I this agree. This is the only real team up movie besides the first Avengers movie that we had with these characters. Right. And then everybody else has their own separate movies that they don't even intertwine with. So, yeah. This this movie's important. I ain't gonna lie. This mm-hmm. this this is that movie. It is. Mm-hmm. And rewatching it now that the whole Infinity Saga is is done, mm-hmm. right? I'm like, man, at the time a lot of this stuff seemed really pointless. Yeah. Like Thor's side quest to go, you know, go, have his vision and all that. Yeah, to go swim. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's like, yeah. oh, it actually works really well. Like, it yeah, works a lot better together yeah. um, this time around than I had given it credit for before. Yeah, people were sleeping on this movie when it came out. Yeah. I didn't. I wasn't one of those people. And I was in the theater. Mm-hmm. We was in that theater, That was great. It was. I do not remember this one. That, I'm glad I was. In the theater, at yeah. least. Yeah. Oh, really? All I got to say is that I saw the first Avengers in theaters and walked down and said, that was all right. But then I saw this one in theaters and I said, now that was an Avengers movie. That's crazy because everyone hated this. I know. Yeah, everyone. It's so interesting that everyone was just like, oh, you know, this is like so whack. They try to stuff so much things in. They try to do this. And it's like, no, this for what it was, it it you had to go back to really see the importance of it all. Right. There are some jokes I would have removed. But that's about it. Yeah, yeah, a little too much humor. It starts not to from get Ultron through. though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's at, Ultron, Ultron's great. I actually think some of the one-liners in the Avengers. I'm just kind of rolling my eyes. Yeah, like, Captain America could use half of his dialogue. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. take, cut his cut. Dang, just cut Captain America. Out. It's times where he's gonna, gonna be a roast fest here. It, it might, yeah, for might Cap. Be. This is gonna be. Joe's really gonna like. This I am because. <laughs> 
Next Iron Man like helmet Captain on the America. table. <laughs> Jason started to not like Captain America. No, I've, I've already, I've always mm. been Team Iron Man. Yeah, because yeah. Cap's just been self. Well, well we're not going to focus on him. God's righteous man. Mm-hmm. God's righteous. <laughs> no. All right. Let's dive into this. So I'm going to read the letterbox description real quick. And of course, there are going to be spoilers everywhere. So if you have not seen this movie, I recommend. That came out like 2015? Yep, yep. I highly recommend just go pause it. Go take two and a half hours of your time. (laughs) Watch it. No, Haki. Come back. All right, here we go. A new age has come. When Tony Stark tries to jumpstart a dormant peacekeeping program, things go awry and Earth's mightiest heroes are put to the ultimate test as the fate of the planet hangs in the balance. As the villainous Ultron emerges, it is up to the Avengers to stop him from enacting his terrible plans. And soon, uneasy alliances and unexpected action pave the way for an epic and unique global adventure. Side note, in the comics, Hank Pym is actually the one. Right, instead of instead, of, instead of Bruce Banner. Yeah. Oh, instead of Tony. Mm-hmm. Okay. Instead of Tony. So, Tony and Bruce. Hmm? Yeah, Tony and Bruce. And at the end Say with Vision. Name. Yeah, yeah, true. And at the end, so Banner, Tony, and Thor. Yeah, they're all guilty. And that's what <laughs> that's what Ultron was saying, though. He said, you guys are all killers. You, How yeah. are you trying to save the world when you guys are yeah. one of the reasons why the world is like it is? Yeah. He was right about Captain America at the end because Amer- Captain America is like, oh, I think that guy died 70 years ago and someone else came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You really can't live without war. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, before we dive into uh, these characters and their journeys, Joe, I'd love to know, so... When we're doing these origin stories, we're mm-hmm. trying to pick a film that really captures something meaningful to us about what our origin stories yeah. convey, right? What they're trying to say and how we live in light of them. Mm-hmm. And so you love like the MCU, especially like, you know, the, the, the Infinity Let's, Saga. Yeah, yeah, yeah the okay. MCU, right? Yeah. So of all the films in the Infinity Saga, just all the films in general, what was it about Age of Ultron that really speaks and resonates to you well, in terms of your origin story? I can understand both Tony's and kind of Ultron's feeling of fear. Yeah. A fear for a lot of different things. Tony, like I'll get into it later, but with Tony's fear of like losing his family, Tony's yeah. fear of just failing, Tony's fear of being the one I feel like he's not good enough yeah. at the end. Cause he like his vision was the fact that not just that his, of that the Avengers died, but that he didn't do enough to save the Avengers. Right. And he was the last one to be alive throughout the rest of it, which yeah. in infinity war, that kind of happened too. Mm-hmm. He was one of the survivors and he felt like he didn't do enough then when he was trying to. Yeah. But there was an aspect in my life where through some trauma and events, yeah. um, I, there was a fear of control. Yeah. Um, and Tony and Ultron <laughs> love to, <laughs> loved to control. Yeah. Or have that issue of control over things. So, yeah. I mean, I guess that does fit in the God complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. And we're going to dive deeper into your story in the next episode. Mm-hmm. But let's let's go with that idea of control, right? Yeah. And so you had the, the first Avengers film where... It's great. They're a team. Mm-hmm. They won. It's, it's, again, it's a very traditional... Story, kind of like Star Wars: A New Hope, but now we get to Age of Ultron, and we're starting to peel back some layers to these characters, Mm -hmm. and we're starting to see that control is something that, especially Tony, but all of them to a degree, struggle with. Like, right? Yeah, I think Thor honestly is one of the ones that'll just like can kind of come out of this, just like, hey, man, I didn't really do anything, but but even like with some of the other like Avengers, like with Tony, uh, not just with Tony, with Captain America, yeah, with Ultron was saying about him, like, you can't live without war. You yeah. have, there has, there is a sense of you need to be in this environment to survive, to actually thrive in. Bruce, him and Tony, they both hubris and pride, not telling right. the rest of the Avengers, this is what we're going to do. This is actually our plan. Well, and it's, it's interesting because with Bruce in particular, I was thinking about this idea of a God complex and control because when Bruce Banner is the Hulk, he has no control at this point, really, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's the Hulk that completely takes over him. So it's something else. Yeah. But then when he's Bruce Banner, it's interesting because he's really led by, in a lot of ways, he's led by Tony, right? Yeah. And Bruce is trying to get into this vision where Tony has this plan of what if we could end the fight and go home? 
And the this movie explores with Bruce. I think this is the best movie of his character in any of the, the Avengers films. But it explores this idea so well of this monster. Mm-hmm. And and of like, he, he sees himself as this monster, not just as the Hulk, but even as Bruce Banner. And to be fair, even Tony sees that. He manipulated everybody from the beginning when he first mm-hmm. got the vision. That vision from the staff, from Wanda. Right. Because as soon as, if when they're on the Quinjet going home, he's like, oh, Thor, you're going to stay for the party, you know? Like, mm-hmm. You just want to brush over things for a little bit and just look over the staff. Is that good with you? And then like, Cap, oh, Cap, are you staying too? It's, he's, he was already plotting. <laughs> mm-hmm. And because it's just like, oh, little innocent thing. Or no one is really worried about Tony like that. But right. he's really going through some things in this movie. Yeah. Which affect him later on too. And Tony calls it out though. He says that we're mad scientists. Yeah. Like, yeah. He says mm-hmm. that we're monsters and Bruce kind of like, I don't think he replies to that. No. Yeah. But he, but, but he it almost, val- it val- yeah. well, it's interesting because it validates something for him. And then there's the conversation later with him and Black Widow because Black Widow also has a view of herself like that, mm-hmm. right? The way that she became yeah. sterile yeah. and yeah. trained as an assassin, what she let go of in order to have that. And I mean, this is really like, just to get down to it, this is a movie about broken people mm-hmm. and just in their brokenness, trying to figure out what the right thing to do is. Yeah. And I applaud the movie because they don't always get it right. Yeah. And this is like the the first movie you see the heroes always on top doing what's right. Now this one, you kind of see that moral ambiguity coming in. These are just lonely people, people. Yeah. Well, that are struggling to connect. And when you get to like the farm scene, yeah. they are so disconnected. Yeah, yeah. And it's cool because yeah. his, his wife is saying, I think that's why- Who, Hawkeye's wife? Yeah. 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 So I think that's, they. I think they need you even more. Mm-hmm. You think. He said, these are, that's, that's an agent. <laughs> and these are smaller agents. <laughs> mm-hmm. But he's the yeah. most grounded one. Yeah. yeah. The one movie you can relate with Hawkeye with. Does it make you like Hawkeye more? No, but-, <laughs> but um, <laughs> Captain America passes on that at the end too, because yeah. who's talking to him? Tony. He's Tony. like, settle down, and, mm-hmm. and Captain America's like, nah, yeah. I choose war. <laughs> that actually makes me like Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> I, I choose war. I he choose sure war. did say I want to build pepper. I choose farm. all the discomfort. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tony said I want with that. Dude. Yeah, I like that farm. And he like at like yeah. and in Endgame he was like out in the wilderness somewhere in the cabin. See, he did it, and they dragged him out to kill him. Yeah, yeah. Damn, he man. knew it too. He's like, I'm gonna do the sacrifice play again like I do every movie and it's not gonna work yeah, out yeah, but he puts himself in the position to do the sacrifice he does play. he really does yeah. <laughs> like every position he's ever in who else could do it who else could do exactly it? who's gonna carry the world the you only know? one with the god complex <laughs> yeah well that is an interesting <laughs> thing about the, the, the god complex with Tony right because you you see even from his very first film that he thinks very highly of himself mm-hmm. and so I think of all the characters in the MCU, he has the most satisfying journey Mm. because I think they did a good job of taking this archetype of the, the, the rich billionaire, you know, who has it all, you know, technology and breaking him down and trying to see like, what's his path look like for Mm. growth. And this is like that midway point, this in civil war, right? Where he's transitioning into becoming a less reckless person, but his God complex is still attached ironically, right? Yeah. Cause he's starting to think of other people before himself. So he says, you know, earlier in the movie that he wants to end the fight so we can all go oh, home. Mm-hmm. And there's an aspect where we know that he wants to one day have a family, even if he's not communicating that yeah. at this point, his God complex though is what pushes him to like be the one, like I will create something in my image. Mm -hmm. It's going to essentially replace me. It's going to do what I could do, but it's going to do it better. And in the timeline at this time, Iron Uh Man 3 happened before, which he told Uh Pepper that he wasn't going to make any more suits, that he was done anyway. So he couldn't even really keep that promise because he thinks this is the safest way to protect Pepper or to protect the people is to keep building these suits to keep, keep putting himself in the front lines. Yeah. But- then, like you said, when they realized they can make acts like Banner and Tony could actually make Ultron because they both knew about the plans. They already re- had it in the mix that that's the next step. That's even yeah. ironically what Ultron wanted to do. Evolve. Yeah. he mm-hmm. want, the, uh, Tony wanted the Avengers to evolve away from the fight and Ultron wanted to evolve the humans and 
in a way, but it's going to kill everybody. Through, we saw yeah. no hope. Well, yeah, the, he wanted to evolve the universe, and he yeah. saw no hope in the humans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which is interesting because Ultron is a darker shadow reflection of Tony, right? Yeah. Ultron is Tony's god complex taken to the nth degree. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because... The fact that what you said there just now, Nick, that Ultron has this almost nihilistic view that humanity can't do it. It almost makes me wonder if deep down Tony struggles with that idea. Mm -hmm. And that's why he becomes this Iron Man, this thing that is more than human. Right. Yeah. And because that, you know, you hit a nerve with Tony when you say, well, without the suit, what are you? Yeah. And of course he tries to deflect it. But I do think that is a genuine struggle, which is why Iron Man three could end with him saying he's not going to do the suit make new suit and all that but really he sees them as such a part of his identity as who he is and i think it's because he sees that that might be the only hope is something that's transhuman something that's outside of human right and how many things in like society today do we see where we're trying to defer out to technology you know especially with ai i mean this movie is so relevant for ai right now and just the outsourcing of well Hum- humanity has its limits, but if we let this thing do this, this take care of it, right? we'll be fine. But yeah. at the end of the day, when we're giving our free will or control over to something else, that thing mm-hmm. will decide our fates. It's like, it's like the, uh, the guy at Google said, uh, did you guys ever hear this quote? The guy at Google who was helping to, I think it was Google or maybe it's chat GPT where he's talking about creating the AI. And he said like, we're making God. Mm. I didn't didn't hear that. He said that, like, he said that straight up. He said, like, this, this is God. Like, we are creating it. And that oh the, he's, he's he's just setting himself up to be the hero at the end. Yeah, like Iron Man. <laughs> we need to we need to <laughs> send this guy. Quick, quick question though. Yeah, if where I just thought of this when you were talking. Where is Tony in his hero's journey in Ultron? Mm. So That's I a good question. I think yeah. I think you're right on with Ultron and Tony's darker side and yeah. Tony's. Being completely revealed. This is Tony's big fall. Yeah. In Ultron. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Do you think he's gotten the call to adventure yet? Oh yeah. But I think I think he's he's well in the the unknown of the hero's journey. So you go from the known to the unknown, and then you have to cross back to the known, right? So in this stage, in at least fr- from what I could say in the hero's journey, there's a series of trials that the protagonist faces. And so you get into the belly of the whale, which literally in the end of the first Avengers movie, when he goes into the wormhole and that is like, you know, like literally going into the belly of a beast and blowing it up. Right. But it's interesting because there's a stage in the hero's journey called woman as temptress. And in this stage, there's something that comes to the protagonist that tries to tempt them in a different direction than where they where they're ultimately going. So Tony is going deeper into this family of the Avengers, right? And we're starting to see this connection he's having with other people. It's no longer just about him, he's part of a team. But now he's trying to create something in his image that is going to essentially replace him. He's in other words, deflecting his responsibility. So it's almost this temptation to stop at this point in the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't been through some of the other stages. Now, the other thing that I see with the hero's journey in this is going in the innermost cave. So when Wanda is going around, for example, and she's revealing these visions of what's really inside all the Avengers, which in my opinion, besides the farm scene, that's the best stuff in the movie. Mm -hmm. And we see that in the innermost cave, Tony is scared of failure. And so he holds on and and guilt, right? Because not only is it failure, but it's also the guilt that I didn't do enough. Mm -hmm. And so that leads to this God complex of control of Mm -hmm. tightening the grip on it. And so he goes, whereas in the hero's journey, you go in the innermost cave, you confront that thing. This is a movie about Tony, not confronting it. He's, he's trying to deflect it and avoid it. So he's going to come face to face with that shadow. And then it's actually in an entirely different movie in civil war, where he's actually going to start to try to rebuild. Yeah. And he can't avoid it. He's face to face with Ultron. 
Yeah. So it's like no matter what he does, it's right in front of him. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. it's cool because Tony also has a lot of self loathing too, and mm-hmm. it completely manifests in Ultron because Ultron hates Tony and Tony yeah. hates Tony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That is that's Vision facts. goes. That's right. He hates, hates you the, the most. most. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Ultron's so good. He, he has mm-hmm. Tony's humor too. There's times yeah. where he sounds just like I was like, that's that's what Tony would say. Oh no, with like, the listen- omelet one. Yeah, mm-hmm. the omelet. he's like, ah, oh, he beat me by it's a second. Like yeah, father yeah. And son. <laughs> Even with um, yeah. when he first met Ulysses Claw, the reason why he got so angry was because the quote's awesome. By the way, he, yeah, he, yeah, he said, "What was it? Keep your friends rich and your enemies rich, and wait to find out which, which is which." It's mm-hmm. awesome. I know. I was watching this. I totally <laughs> forgot Andy Circus was in this movie. I was that's, like, hey, yeah. "This movie's so good." <laughs> oh, that's um, right. Yeah. That's yeah. that's Gollum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's a, uh, he's but, a and Caesar. And yeah, Caesar, Caesar. Yeah. He's a cuttlefish. He's so good. <laughs> but, <laughs> lights, disco lights. <laughs> but you know, you know what this made me realize about because I was we were Tori and he's I were watching Tori and I were watching this a couple weeks ago, and I said, "What makes these movies great?" They got great actors in these movies. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think, like, if you would have had lesser actors with mm-hmm. this material, because I'm honestly, like, some of this writing's not great. Yeah. You know, at times. But these actors Make it, really bring yeah. it they out. Stacked they have it is yeah. a It is a stack. This movie has a stack. They got Samuel Jackson in here. Cast. They got Antoine in the phone. <laughs> They do have yeah. Antoine. That, it, every time I see him as Antoine, I'm, I'm just a yeah. man who cares very much but, about you. I almost that's Antoine. texted the chat. Samuel L. Jackson says that the that Ultron's multiplying faster than Catholic yeah, rabbits. I was, that, I was yeah. like, did I just hear that? Yeah. I was like, I saw that. I'm like, that's fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh now, my god, like, this movie's crazy. This movie's great though. Now, Great. now, one of the other things I noticed in this movie is that, that Ultron drops a lot of biblical references, yes. mm-hmm. right? And so why do you guys think that is? Like, what do you think the significance is of all these quotes and references to I, scripture? I even had a, I have had a theory, a theory about this. It's either he's referencing Thanos with scripture because that's what Thanos did. He's He was either preparing for something like a Thanos because that's what Tony was doing during this time too. Yeah. But just in a twisted way. He wanted humanity mm. to evolve, evolve in which way to yeah. face off against things that are higher it's up. It's a good precursor yeah. to Thanos. Or he's just seeing it as himself, and that's why he's referencing it as, yeah. I see myself on this rock I'm building my That's church. what I think, too. Yeah, yeah. it's symbolic. Yeah, he's yeah. A, well, he's inherited Tony's God complex. Yeah. 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 Like, that's all of it. Completely him. Mm-hmm. He, he sits in the church. He's got the cape on. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Here to confess your sins. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. How much yep. time do you have? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's more than you. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about like the biblical narrative and t- to bring that into this here. So you have like the, the Tower of Babel, mm-hmm. which is like this, you know, we're going to unite together to try to create something. We're going to try to create something and in that unity, there's actually a destruction of what it creates because there's unintended consequences. Like, for example, if you're going to build this giant tower, you have to have people who are going to build that. And what do you do when you do that? Will you enslave them, right? And so there's like this idea that when we try to do these things in and of ourselves and try to set ourselves up in that God complex like a Tower of Babel situation, there's always going to be unintended consequences, and this movie shows, you know, that those consequences manifest in different ways through not just Wanda being able to get in their heads because, as we'll talk about in the next episode, their vision is clouded by all this fear and trauma. But also with the fact that Tony, after this movie, is going to have to live with the guilt that a city fell from the sky. Yeah. yeah. He killed – and this is a result of a lot of collateral a lot, damage. A lot of on, damage. Yeah. And it's like Even you're sitting there that. watching it, yeah. and you're just like, I'm really glad there's another film that <laughs> it takes a whole other film to explore the ramifications of that, yeah. which is what makes Tony's like character in Civil War make so much sense mm-hmm. of where he ultimately goes. But you know, when we're trying to build the Tower of Babel, there's always going to be unintended consequences, and whatever that Babel looks like in your life or in the world. It always at the root of it is some sort of God complex. Yeah. And it's not unless the true God comes and a wit and separates that from us, like, right, that externalization and bringing, calling forth the parts of your identity. Like we talk about this in narrative therapy here, but the parts of your identity that 
you have agency over and that testify to what you're capable of in that agency. So your sense of purpose, for example, your values, you, your beliefs, right? When those become purified and brought forth, then you can walk, then Tony will be able to walk out into an identity, a greater sense of identity that's more in line with the vision than it is with Ultron. I was even thinking with the unity process when he's first talking, Ultron's first talking to Quicksilver and Wanda and the drones are flying mm -hmm. around. He's like, I have, I have something the Avengers never have, harmony and unity, but it's not true unity because it's just himself. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, not even, oh. it's not even other people. It's just him. But Tony will have that true unity because- just like Jesus wanted us to be in the church and to be have other people. So it's not just us. It is the people, the body, God, yeah. bringing the people together in your life to help you. So yeah. it's good stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Ultra good picture. No community. He just has himself. Yep. I think the God complex really is, is there because Ultron is starting to, like his whole journey is interesting because the first time you see him, he's like this really fragile. And that's actually yeah. like my favorite design of his is the first kind of yeah. Frankenstein yeah. wobbly. <laughs> like I was like, that's almost creepier, I, right? Yeah. Where he has no mouth moving and has just got these dead eyes and just look at, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but he's coming out and he's trying to, you know, like a Pinocchio, like a Frankenstein, he's awakening to consciousness mm -hmm. and he's realizing who am I made in the image of? Yeah. Pinocchio is a very pleasant story because he's made in the image of somebody who's a flawed but good father overall with Geppetto. Frankenstein, on the other mm -hmm. hand, is made in the image of a very disturbed scientist. And yeah. that's kind of the direction they go with Age of Ultron. Well, I think monster. it's both. I think yeah, that's, that's what I mean. I think that's why he's conflicted because yeah. Tony's got Frankenstein and Geppetto in him. Yeah. yeah. He's got the good and bad. Yeah. So that's why he's like, what, like, what, Where what am, am I being I? torn yeah. in between? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so good. And I even feel like in, in the end, he wants to be seen other than something of Tony. He just wants to be seen as himself. Instead of something that is tied to another individual like yeah. Tony, he hates Tony. Yeah, yeah well, he cut, he cuts Ulysses' claw, isn't he? Yeah, claw? he yeah. cuts his arm, his arm off. off. Yeah, and then feels bad. Yeah, which and is it feels bad because he's a robot. Yeah. Then yeah. he's yeah. angry again. He's like, "No, a Stark is not." Vision has no emotion. I, but I don't Ultron, think. he does. He, I mean, he falls in love with Wanda. Yeah, but but Ultron experiences more because he's made i feel like in tony's image well see i think tony's a really emotional guy yeah. too see i think vision is the other side of tony i think vision yeah. is the pure side of tony because i do think tony could also like like both ultron and vision represent the different directions tony could ultimately go mm -hmm. and with Ultron, it's interesting because throughout the film, he's becoming more human. So we're watching that journey of that. So that's why when he rips the guy's arm off, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And he has this temper tantrum, like a child, yeah. right? Don't yeah. compare me with Stark. Right. <laughs> so he's he's becoming human. And, and Vision, it's interesting because Vision, like Ultron doesn't see he's doing that. And Vision also kind of like stands outside of humanity. Like he doesn't see himself mm -hmm. in this film as part of it yet. Yeah. In later films, as he gets a connection with Wanda, he does start to. Yeah. But it's interesting because both of these things made in Tony's image are becoming more human, but in different ways. Yeah, yeah. Vision's going to become more compassionate, mm -hmm. right? Gracious, even self-sacrificial when he's willing to let the Infinity Stone take in. Yeah. Ultron is becoming more selfish, nihilistic, and ultimately into that God complex. Yeah. And he's lonely too. Yeah, yeah. Because he—that's well, he, why he's creating all these other ones. He, he doesn't. Well, he doesn't kill Wanda. He just yep. lets her there, and he waits for her to wake up. He said, "I wanted to show someone. I don't have anyone else." Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that shows how lonely that God complex go, uh, yeah. becomes mm -hmm. when you just want to control everything or feel like you're the only one who knows it. Yeah. You push everyone else away. The last thing Ultron felt was the reason why he was created, which was fear. He had yeah. his fear of death. Yeah. And the reason why he was created was out of fear. That's crazy. So the, the conversation between Vi Vision and Ultron in the forest is just Tony's psyche. Like, mm. that, that's, yeah. what, that's what I think, yeah. Oh, that's we're deep. watching Tony's consciousness <laughs> right crazy. now. Yeah. yeah. So this that's movie is all about Tony. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Well, that's it's, a, it's an excellent example of how you can reveal a character yeah. in a different way, right? Because there's already that's a lot dope. of good, yeah. there's a lot yeah, of good character dope. work done with Tony, like throughout these films. Mm -hmm. But then if you look at Vision 
at, through Jarvis, which is something he created. Yeah. And it's yeah. a reflection of what is the best of what he's capable of and what the worst. And they're having this conversation in the forest where Ultron's just saying humanity is, doomed. you know, they're they're doomed, they're, they're doomed. and uh, and <laughs> Vision's kind of like, yeah, yes, <laughs> probably. You're so naive. But but uh, well, I was born yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I was born. Oh, it's such a great line. That whole conversation's great. Yeah. Yeah. But he but he says that line that there's grace in their failings. failings. Yeah. And I think that is the entire movie of Age of Ultron yeah. summed up. And eventually, and that's going to be their it. whole journey. Which which is yeah. it's it's. Something's not beautiful because it lasts. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. And then there's grace in their family. Yeah. Yeah. So Ultron's in the black and white. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. kill it all because mm -hmm. there's, there's so much tension. Like, I can't handle yeah. their failings or their their imperfections. Yeah, yeah. He has no grace. Yeah. And Vision was talking about the golden age of Marvel as well. It's not mm -hmm. beautiful because <laughs> it lasts. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. You know what's cool, though? Is yeah. That, so, <laughs> so Ultron is Scorsese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kill it all. Just They're all doomed. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? The thinking is crazy. The yeah. black and white, yeah, the black black and white, white thinking yeah. is crazy. That's wild. What, what's cool oh my gosh. is Vision, which a pro product of Jarvis, mm -hmm. Vision is deemed worthy by Mjolnir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like it, like So that's like Tony's vision, his, his idea for grace and protection is like deemed worthy. Like that part of him yes. is almost yeah. validated. Yeah. Like that, that goodness in him. Well, and it's interesting because it does require when Thor comes down and brings vision to life, mm -hmm. it implies at least, you know, again, if I'm kind of reading this symbolically, it implies that something has to come, something divine, right? If Thor's a God, mm -hmm. something has to come and awaken that part of Tony because it's dormant. Right mm -hmm. now, it can't just but be Tony, himself. But Tony holds on to this hope of like, oh well, what if we could get it right this time with Vision? Mm -hmm. And everybody's mad. Cap's throwing his shield. Uh, and get up! All that, that right? whole yeah, fight, right? Caused here, like a hundred thousand dollars worth of damage with that stupid frisbee. Throw. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So so Donald Trump calls it a frisbee. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most <laughs> versatile <laughs> material in the world, and they use it to make a frisbee. Yeah, yeah. primitive uh, also black and white thinking. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so funny. But but, is, yeah. but isn't that interesting then that someone with a god complex requires you know the true a true god, god figure to come and awaken the part of because there is something like within that desire to want to help people yeah. right that desire to want to to do what's best mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things in tony that are good and thor is able to through bringing vision to life he's able to bring that out into its fullness yeah. and that's ultimately how they win cuz had it not been for vision i they think they would have lost in that yeah, final battle yeah, they yeah, but it, lost. vision wouldn't have been able or uh, there wouldn't be vision there to shut all right. out of the net mm -hmm. otherwise he just would have escaped virtually. wanda would have yeah. died there to be honest because she but was it, left behind right mm -hmm. but it really is tony's that spark that is actually what saves the day. Mm -hmm. And Vision is just the personification of that. Yeah. It's deep. Yeah, it is. It's deeper than all the other ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what? We, we, I, I'm going to start calling this Iron Man 4. I think this is, <laughs> what is Iron Man 4? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I yeah. Think. Cap got Captain America 3 Civil War. We can have Age of Ultron. To Iron, Iron Man, Man 3. Iron I mean, Man, Age of this, Ultron. This yeah. period right now where we've it got yeah. Captain, <laughs> you got Captain America Winter Soldier. The first Guardians of the Galaxy, Age of Ultron, yeah. Civil War. This is like when the MCU it was, was at just its peak. Yeah, this is the really 70s of, of the cinema. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. I love it. Well, in the next episode, we're going to dive more into Age of Ultron. But what I love in this conversation is that there's always more to stories than we often give it credit for. <laughs> and then often what we see, right? And so what does it look like to craft your story intentionally? Because even though the, this movie is flawed, it is a beautiful mess of a film. There is so many problems I can point to in it. Those are the best uh, ones. But there is, <laughs> like, but, but there is the something Batman about it. The returns of <laughs> the, the cinematic universe. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I love about stories. And even in the beautiful mess of a story, we can find meaning in it. Yeah. And I think in our stories as well, sometimes our stories might feel like a beautiful mess. And so I'd encourage you, if you want to get some tips about how to better understand and tell your story, if you sign up for our emailing list at allthingsnarrative.com, you'll get a bonus episode of this podcast 
five tips to better tell your story. And you'll be able to see not only in your own story, but also in the stories that you watch in films and in other places, you'll be able to see how these tips about hooks and themes and genre, how these get utilized and how they can help you better to appreciate them. So all you got to do is to go into the description in the show notes here, go to allthingsnarrative.com, sign up for that mailing list and you will get that free episode and I hope it is a blessing to you. And next week we are going to dive deeper into trauma and fear as presented in Age of Ultron and in Joe's story. Trauma and fear, guys. Yeah, trauma and fear. <laughs> trauma and fear, guys. <laughs> there are no strings no. on me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Live a Meaningful Story podcast produced by All Things Narrative. If you'd like to learn more about our coaching, workshops, events, please check out allthingsnarrative.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at All Things Narrative. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing and leaving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and tune in next time as we continue exploring the stories we love and the stories we live. Take care.